Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's continuation of the Mage Realm, Mage Realm campaign. This is Demon Gate, and I am the infamous creator of this horrible concoction that is the Chaos System. No, but it really is good. You should check it out. First time is free. Um, no, you can find it at for $15, I believe, in PDF format. Uh, on drive through RPG. So be sure to check it out and check out the website, www.arcanumsyndicate.com. And thanks to all the artists that do all the maps and all the token art. I'll leave the links in the descriptions below because there's a lot of them. And thank you for watching. And please like and subscribe. Tonight we do have playing with us uh, some new characters and uh if you could introduce yourselves uh starting with scars on i'll fix going off real quick internet's giving me trouble sorry oh yep i from the rigging doing nothing in particular we see pip a uh, freckled dwarf with a button nose and a shading grin they have really red hair shaved on one side Fine, a swanky red vest and a white button down shirt. Nobody is entirely sure what it is they do on the ship, other than showboat. A highborn thrill seeker, they were trained by a guild of thieves in the way of the new die. They first ran into Shadow and his crew some time ago when they were after the same mark. After a lighthearted scrap and absconding with some of the riches, they found themselves joining in with the crew. And now they're here. Excellent. And hey, hey. Who might be muted? Hey, hey, are you with us? No. You might have stepped away. All right. Let's do Izuzu. Yeah, so Izuzu is a rather uh, large and intimidating char fiend. This deep, kind of blue-green mottled scale. Uh, typically wearing a rather light, sort of tribal-looking clothing. Uh, but sort of the ship's uh, resident scald slash bard. Uh, the war drummer, essentially. Um, but Azuzu kind of hangs around the lower deck, typically playing the drums, you know, raising spirits and stuff. And, uh, let me see, where the fuck did I put it? Oh, I put it on the sheet. There we go. Um, so I got a little entry as well. I wanted to be free of my family, of my underlings, of all those horrid burdens. So I fled. Nay, a retreat. Izuzu's second failure. Yet still, Izuzu shall be the greatest scald ever known. But it will take time. For now, I am strong. Yet still, there is always someone stronger. So more fighting, more running, more drinking, more life. Because Izuzu is free now. And all those pesky burdens of leadership are gone. Now, when the stronger ones come, I will beat them into a meat husk and climb even higher. Azuzu's drums shall be the thunder on the mountaintops, and foe's blood shall be the rivers. When Sathama finally calls Azuzu into their embrace, they shall see the history of glory incarnate. For now, though, I'm a ship skull. In the sky! For who but Azuzu would take to the very closest rays of Sathama and thunder their war call down from the heavens. Still, though, it is very much the same as a normal ship, but sailing the clouds. The saga of Azuzu is strange as always. Still, perhaps here I can find a home, kin not of blood but of spirit. The saga grows. That's Zuzu. Excellent. 
And hey, hey, you ready? So, hey, hey, Mao Hao, um, is, uh, likes his naps. And he likes to work as little as possible. Uh, he's not dumb, but he is definitely illiterate and completely uninterested in anything having to do with academics or history. He, um, spends the little time when he's not napping smoking pipe weed and exercising he has a very rigorous uh, acrobatic physical uh, regimen that he goes through every day and um, he's difficult to get to know um, he seems very reserved and quiet most of the time all right and scars on you ready yes i am um so scars on is a uh, chaplain of the order of the twin sons and i do have a which is a or dedicated to the maker i have a quick word i'll go through hail the maker and may you always walk in his light I am Skarza, chaplain of the Order of the Twin Sons. We are dedicated to the Maker's vision, a land untouched by the darkness of demons, a land unmarred by senseless violence, and a place where any dream can be realized. We have much work ahead of us, as you might know, living in this place. I was raised by the Order. My parents, though good people, could not care for a child. They had dreams of exploring faraway places, and I was both unplanned and unwanted. I do not begrudge them. I am unsure of what my life might have taken me if the Order had not raised me. I sometimes wonder of that life. But those thoughts, they are distractions from purpose. I was born with a gift. The Order and I realized it one day. I carried a recently cleaned blade for one of our Templars. Clumsy as I was in youth, I dropped the sword and cut my leg. I was being treated by the apothecary, the scar closed and healed before our eyes. Some beyond our haven, only foul-blooded and tainted, but those within recognized that I was given a gift from the Maker. Where I had once been on the path to priesthood, I was instead placed into the care of Father Demoni, head of the Order's shield sect. This sect trained our chaplain, holy warriors dedicated to defending the good and decent and caring for our Templars whenever I could. Father Demoni raised me to fight, but also raised me as if I were one of his own children. He had no need to care for one such as me, scarred with wretched blood, as some had whispered. But he trained with me, cared for me, raised me in his own home alongside his sons, a family within a family, my church and my father. He ensured me that I should have no doubts about my purpose. The Maker would decide it all for me. And now I set out on my own. I bring my book and quill, my mace and shield, my armor and my bedroll. I am prepared for any and all challenges. I will stand above all evil and beside those who would face the horror of this world with a broad chest and undaunted will. I am Skarzan shield bearer and I carry the Maker's light in my heart. Nice. And Carl. Well, Milgram is so far a unseen member. Uh, they are a towering figure, tall but lanky, covered in some armor, and always having their head covered with a hood. So far, they don't speak much, they don't sit, say much, but when People do get a glance of them, they can swear they can see some glowing embers where their eyes should be, as well as some pale skin poking out from just under the shadow of the hood. In spite of this, they are actually quite talkative if talked to. They don't seem uh, to like conflict. However, they do wield a strangely large sword that emits a strange aura, and they seem to be to keep, they seem to keep it close to them at all times. 
That said, whenever a challenge comes up, they are brave and fast, and they always keep their cool. And it seems they're always ready to uh, lend a helping hand to those in need around them. Excellent. And I am Rogue the Game Master for tonight's episode of Demon Gate. Let's do this. I'll bring you guys over to the map real quick, because I want to let you know about what happened last game. For those of you who are not here, hopefully everybody's got sight around this area here. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yep. Cool. North Dawn, the guild back in the city of Misgard, has called upon you all once more and sent a message by Crow to meet you on the ship. There is a quest needing to be accomplished. They are searching for a crystal staff called Stormcaller, and it was stolen from a merchant vessel known as the Endeavor. The ship was taken out near the Isle of Illusion. You would know that place is a very dangerous place, uh, similar to the the, uh, the legends of the Bermuda Triangle in our world. They say it was attacked by a pirate by the name Captain Veldroth of Ichabor. You maybe know this captain a pirate mage, or Mudai, a shadow elf who is feared amongst other pirates and buccaneers. You have heard that he likes sailing around and stealing magic when he can. This might be a dangerous job, but a good way to test your skills and gain some reputation. So North Dawn wants the magic staff back for a sweet amount of coin. And if you so happen to bring the head of Captain Valdroth of Ichabor, you'll gain a hefty bonus. In our last episode, the crew was met by some newcomers at the port of Misgard. Two new members of the crew were hired on, and the ship took off into the sky towards the Isle of Illusion. You did hear a tale of warning from an old spell guard that used to fly the skies, that there were creatures in the clouds at night that didn't like the light so be sure to keep some lanterns lit. And as the ship entered into the clouds that night, your fears were confirmed. And as the tales of this place were certainly true, the veil mist is real, and all of you that were flying into the mist could hear the screech and the batting of wings. So I'm going to bring you guys to the current situation. The battle map. This doesn't mean anything's going to happen, of course. Pay no attention to the battle map. Everybody have view here? Yes. This character is not yet on the ship, but he is about to be. And uh, let's explain that in detail here. Um, has everybody got that view of that handout? Yep. So leaving behind the, the city of Misgard and its comforting streets, smells of incense and exotic foods, it's not the easiest choice to make. However, with the tales of great adventure, danger, and good coin, it's often the choice that is made for those who are poor. They must sail away and seek their fortune before returning to settle down. With tales of great treasures in the lost Isle of Illusions, there are temptations. You all sail above the sea upon a skyship called the Sky Tamer. Dragon boats and skyships are rare, but not so much in these parts, the country of Mage Realm. It's home to all manner of strange things. In the southern lands, witches are hunted and burned at the stake, but in Mage Realm, there's a safety for the strange and unusual. 
The floating isles and the flying ships are an amazing sight, something to do with the gravitational anomaly that has existed ever since the time of the shattering. When the moon was struck by a blinding light and parts of it fell to the world, a great mass of the moon fell here in these lands and split the islands into pieces, killing all life here. Your ship, the Sky Tamer, is driven by the sails, yet the Void Stone is what controls the elevation. You all sail into the mist of the dark skies. The light from the shattered moon fades away as it's swallowed by the clouds around you. The captain of the ship, Captain Shazad the Reaver, is a lizard kin. He called out that the vessel should lower the altitude. But when you take a quick glance down, there's still quite a distance to the waters below. Most likely it would be death if you fell. There's a screech heard in the darkness, something horrible sounding. You can all hear the beating of wings, and then you notice the eyes in the mist as these creatures fly around your ship. Suddenly, two of these creatures burst from the darkness, with a character struggling and fighting them in midair. They lose grip on this stranger, and then the stranger tumbles to the ship. And you guys can take it away here. Uh... As this stranger comes tumbling down to the deck of the ship, they come to a screeching halt. Uh, th their armor dragging along the ship with a not too pleasant sound of metal meeting wood. And eventually they arrest their momentum by stabbing the wood somewhat with their sword. They bring themselves to their feet and look around in a, in a frenzy towards the creatures, not seeming to quite yet take notice of where they've landed. Welcome aboard. Ship will hop up, hefting a head and looking at the wing creatures. Whoa! Huh? Oh, um, creatures of the mist. Uh, this is not the time for pleasantries. Hang on. They look around, just giving, just, uh, giving you all a look. You can't, it can't really, you can't really see their face just yet. Unless we want to get closer. Uh, Skarzon will, um, who, he, uh, Skarzon was praying as this was going on, um, just hands a little up and eyes closed, head bowed, and then the racket, uh, reaches for the mace, but looks and sees this, uh, this newcomer and approaches him. Hey, old friend, are you injured? What? And he looks up to the sky, kind of confused. Did you, is there another ship that you fall from? Uh, I was sailing with another, uh, rowdier crew. Um... They did not last long against these things. Thankfully, I am uninjured. They weren't quite able to get some scratches in with the grip they had on me. However, uh, you'd best be ready. Unless you want to meet the same fate that other ship did. You'd see Azuzu kind of approaching with uh, rather heavy steps, of course. He's like You hear it from a, quite a distance. Uh, Azuzu's rather large and also stocky but you notice this uh, even with the mist like this clear care put in to Azuzu who is uh, surprisingly good looking and in uh, impeccable shape for even a shard fiend uh, with a fancy 19 pb but Azuzu kind of stomps on over and you hear the tin of the drums around their waist uh, here and there and now people fall from the sky in the aisles of strange as always. Uh, Sorry, about when you say that too, um, you, you notice, you know, the clouds and the mist around you kind of keep visibility really, really low, but, um, there, there sounds like an explosion, maybe, uh, uh, of, an electrical blast you can see this shock like almost a lightning bolt fly through the mist above the ship and then you can see another ship near you almost come through the mist as it's falling you can see people fighting on board for a moment and those winged creatures are all around them 
uh, that's when you start to notice some of these creatures are making their way towards you. And everybody can, uh, everybody can roll an initiative. So to do this, you would go click on your token and go up to the initiative button. Scarzon's gonna look up to Hey Hey, who appears to be in the crow's nest. And... Mahal, be wary! Creatures come from above. Hey Hey, who was uh, sleeping, uh, wakes up at the sound of uh, Scarzon calling an alarm, and um, stretches. <sighs> Make sure all the kinks are out, and then stands up and looks for the danger. Let's see who acts first. Um, Gabriel Bade is actually on board the vessel as well, and he's he seems to be like a uh, an assistant, maybe the uh, the navigator of the ship. Um, most of you would know him anyway. Uh, he shouts uh, out as he points to the ballista in the front of the ship, and he says, "Can anyone man that thing?" And Roll initiative for him as well. And just so anyone knows mechanically, if you have the uh, skill in artillery or siege weapons, that would be the skill that you want for that. Um, if not, it, you'd suffer a minus three to fire it. And that's just if you want to, not necessary. All right, the first one. Here we go. Yes, that's that. <laughs> first one is actually hidden from view. Let's see here. There you are. This winged creature seems to, uh, flying near the front of the ship and is going to as it flies up you see uh, Gabriel or he, he's he's kind of pointing towards the ballast at that you know shouting can someone man that thing and that's exactly when this creature flies up uh, it looks like a, a female it's uh, fangs and its body are shaped uh, and it has a wand in its hand that outstretches and it fires a bolt of lightning directly at Gabriel. Shit. He was needlessly harsh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even and... try to parlay. <laughs> you notice the bolt. It strikes the side of the ship. It doesn't hit Gabriel, and he kind of like ducks his head down. And then another creature appears over here out of the mist, and it reaches that uh, that location right there. And you can see that one. It has like this spiked mace in its hand as it screeches and starts flying towards you. And then it is Azuzu's turn. What are you going to do, Azuzu? Alright, so Zuzu kind of stomps on up here. That should be... Yeah, that, that'll cover pretty much the whole ship right here, I think. Um, and you see Azuzu kind of stretching as he walks up and crackles their knuckles and begins to pound at the uh, war drums along his waist just going nuts and I'm going to uh, it starts as this kind of low heavy drumming that then picks up pace and really inspires a lot of spirits I'll play Fury Song 
So one arm, one unarmed action granting all allies temporary frenzy with their song. Uh, so I make a singing or music check. I'll do a music check. And for every five, I add a frenzy to the party pool of frenzy. And uh, I am going to use all of my actions for this, which will uh, boost how much we get, I believe. Unless that's the other one. No, that's the uh, other one. But yeah, so. Roll my singing. Well, not singing. Uh, drums. Drum time. Hey, nice. So, everybody feels this kind of thunder in their blood. Like, this sensation of, like, utterly ready to fightness <laughs> um, as we have uh, a pool of four frenzy to use as we need that's cool that's everybody gains four or it's like uh, I believe it's uh, all the group may burn from this pool so it's a pool of four okay. that uh, we can use uh, uh, once it's used up or combat's over it fades but yeah without, so yeah. without spending your own frenzy um, exactly. I saw quite a few. You only have two starting frenzy, which is that, that could be useful. Nice. All right. And who is after that? It is Hey Hey. Okay. So Hey Hey is going to um, scamper down from the crow's nest as quickly as he can. How many hexes of movement would you say it would take to get to the deck? Hmm. I would say at least six. Okay. Um, so I'll take six to there, and then seven, eight, nine, ten to there. Unless you great leap. I wasn't sure if I could great leap down like that. Can I? Yeah. It would oh, take in that case... a target six. If there's six hexes, it would take a target six. And then that way, I'd only take one hex from your movement, you know? Because you'd oh, be kind of jumping straight down, yeah. Absolutely. Let's see if I can break my leg. Uh, what uh, skill should I roll? Uh, either acrobatics. If you don't have acrobatics, it defaults to dexterity. Or jumping. Jumping. Mm. Okay, maybe, maybe I will don't invest try in... and land over the grate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll invest in those in the future. You're... I'm just gonna roll dexterity. Cool. Easy. No problem. All right. So one, and then let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can get to the ballista, and nice. um, I remember Una from the last session was specific that they had armed it and prepared it. Correct? Yeah. Sweet. Can I take a shot? Yes, and I think for like, you know, cinematic purposes, it wouldn't really make sense for Una to just vanish. Maybe Una's helping to assist, you know, like loading the thing and, and stuff like that. It does take quite a bit of people to run it. I love that. Hmm. Um, okay, um, so I'm just going to roll a d20 and minus three. Yeah. Oh, crap. So, a four. Uh, oh, but let's see. Could still at, um... And she sees it coming and uh, dodges it. All right. That was a good try. That's my turn. And nil. There you go. Nil will uh, start running towards the front of the ship. And uh, will actually take... Uh, set themselves here. Next to... Yes, Nil will move up to... Next to Azuzu. And raise her shield and sword. Ready for... And ready and waiting for these creatures to move into... Melee range, as they do not possess any thrown weapons just yet. Right. Unless they can see anything they can grab and throw. Go ahead and make a perception check, actually. Um, you would click on your token, go up to attributes, and then the drop-down menu goes to perception. 
Let's see if you can see this one coming out of the mist here. Ah. Uh, Let's see. Possible. Let's see, it's possible. You do. You notice that this one, it's uh, near the ship. Uh, you don't necessarily have to attack it, but it is out here. And and just a heads up, um, since you, you're all new to the system, um, you could spend your actions to go into a defensive stance if you want to, if you don't have anything else to do. That is exactly what I was thinking. Cool. You want to do that defensive stance then? Yep, indeed. So Neil, uh, this stranger will put up their shield at the ready, facing towards the uh, new creature approaching the ship as I call them out with a shout of, There! Cool. All right, Pip. Hey. So I'm just going to run over here and immediately throw on my hand bolts. Oh, to This... Reaching over here. The new one that just popped up? Oh, um, no, this one with the wand. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. That's good. And just so everybody knows, the, the mana bolt, it, it, uh, it drains uh, a caster's mana power. It's pretty devastating to their mana pool. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. 18, a nice attack. She tries to dodge. Oh, I forgot to put the minus one in. That's a hit. So Pip reels back and kind of throws this little shimmering hammer out, just dumped it straight in the face with it. That will show you! Stop casting spells! And go ahead and put hit spell effect, and go to mana bolt, and then uh, pass the modifier, but when it gets to power or multiplier, put a three in there, and hit enter. And that's how much mana will be drained from her pool. Okay, so it's a, it's a d6 times three and not three d6s. Correct. Okay. It should be a D6 in the in the spell effect, and make sure to have an exclamation point yeah. by the D D6, yeah, because that'll make it explode. All right. She doesn't have a high mana pool. So. I will then repeat that. And, and you can do that again, yeah. Nice. And for most of you um, that haven't done this before, you can spend an action. Most people have two actions. You can spend an action to aim, uh, which will it'll grant you an extra plus two to hit if you spend an action aiming. And in spells, the same thing. If you spend an extra action, it'll that's another hit. It'll give you an extra plus two on your spell. That works with melee weapons and, and uh, bows and everything. Oh! Whittling That's her down. Fun. Now, if you That's want to, two. you can burn Frenzy. You could burn two and aim and do it. Or two. you could burn... Yeah. I guess we've got that uh, pool of extra frenzy. You do. Um, so I will do that. I'll go on two of it to aim and shoot. So this is two from the Scald's pool, right? Yes. Cool. If... And just so yeah. everybody knows, you can burn up to two frenzy per round for everybody that has it. Here's her defense. Okay. Uh, no one flies past. Scar's on.
All right. Um, so I should have I should have did the uh, the old Skog roar for the plus one initiative. I don't think it would make a difference, but I should have done that at the beginning. Um, yeah, Skarzan is going to uh, let me make sure I can actually do that. Hold on, counting squares. And if you want to, you can try to make a perception check as well, since you're coming over to this side of the ship. To see into the mist. Or wherever you're going, actually. So Skarzhan's going to start moving up. Um, yeah, I can make the perception check um, as I'm moving. I don't know. If, I, I don't think I'm going to see anything, but we might as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Scars on He's got bad eyes. Um, what will doing a perception check keep you from going full defense? No. Okay. Target number is five. All right. Hey, yes. You notice another one over here. And there is one coming out over here. Okay. Yeah, this girl's gonna point them out. They surround us from all sides. Take cover. Bring them close. And he uh, will come to rest here. Um and uh, I'll go into full defense as well. Yeah, I'll, put, no <laughs> I'll put this little token mod on you guys to kind of say you're in full defense there. Little, little stronghold image. All right, one of the Veil Furies. Oh, which one is it? Oh, oh, that one, that one. Here it comes. It dives down to who's that? Is Zuzu? Yeah, I was gonna ask as well. Sorry, I was muted. Um, would I have been able to do that as well since I only used the one action for the uh, song? No. Mm -hmm. Or is it? That's if you don't use any actions at all. That's what I thought. Um, it comes flying towards you as you're playing the drums, and tries to hit you with a bone axe as it comes swooping down. This is a heavy attack. Two actions. Oh, shoot. Crappy roll. Yeah, better get out of the way of that. <laughs> Let me step out of the way real quick. Nice. Yeah, Zuzu um, continues pounding away at the drums as they dip right out of the way of the axe as the thing comes swooping in. Nice. I'm gonna see here. We'll say, um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna roll a d8, starting at Garth, one, two, and going down. We're gonna see who this fury over here is interested in attacking. Three, it's coming at Pip. I guess that makes sense. Pip's closest. All right, this one flies up from below the ship, you know, it's just coming up over the, underneath it. And, and uh, it seems to have some kind of like Chris dagger in its hand. Uh, and you notice when it gets close, it's like, it just sounds like a wasp as it's getting closer to you. And... Tries to stab you with this blade. It says bone axe, but it's a dagger. I have to change it. Seventeen. Maybe one fucking minutes. Why is this set up? 
All right, times two damage uh, with the knife. Hmm? Only four. Man. Do you have any armor at all? No, no armor. So four off your HP. It's a lucky roll. <laughs> Alright. This other one. Uh oh. Come on and get some hey hey action. Bring it on. That one has... Alright, this one flies up and it tries to stick you with the, uh, this kind of needle that's sticking out of its bulbous butt area. Oh no. That sounds terrible. Like a wasp stinger. Oh god. What the fuck? Wasp ladies. Oh shit. All right, let's see if I'm able to dodge that. Swat that fly. Hey, hey you yes. You did just wake up from a nap, so if you didn't, I would have excused you. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah, really. That one appears right there. Oh, shit. And it is Gabriel's turn. Gabriel's gonna try to run and help you. Uh -oh. Pip. Since he's right next to you. He runs up with his dagger and tries to heavy attack it. And here's where I play with myself for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he hits it though. One, two, three, four. That's a lot. Gabriel runs up and he stabs the thing nicely with the blade of his dagger. Ooh, almost kills it. It screeches as blood, like that green blood shoots out of it. And that is Gabriel. And then we have the spellcaster. That nasty spellcaster flies over here a little bit. Still looking at Gabriel though. And this one, it concentrates on its spell and fires the shock orb towards Gabriel. Gabriel shouts to you, Pib. Ah, look out! And uh, tries to duck. Sure enough, it blasts into the side of the ship. This one starts to fly towards you and gets to about right here. Izuzu, your turn. All right. So, Azu this thing just came down to swipe at Azuzu and. There's this big old grin on Azuzu's face. I want to try and, like, it's kind of like midair swinging at me and stuff, right? Can I try and grab it? And, like, yeah, definitely. Just... Awesome, yeah. I want to basically just try and grab it and smash it right into the ground. Would that just be, like, unarmed or? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sweet. You can do a you can do a quick unarmed attack and then a, then a smash or if you're trying to tackle it and hold it that'd be two actions. But if you're just trying to grab it, that'd be a quick action unarmed. Yeah, I think I'll I'll do a quick action to grab it because um, I've got the three unarmed actions because he's a martial artist or whatever. Um, so Azuzu will go for the grab. Uh, do I just roll my normal attack? Mm-hmm. Normal unarmed. Alrighty. So here's the grab. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, 
perfect. So I imagine as Azuzu keeps pounding away the drums, and this thing is uh, swinging away with this flail and failing to hit, as suddenly it feels this yank as it sees the tail long and lithe wrap up around its leg and smash down as I will then uh, use my other two for a, a rage attack. Um, as I will then, uh, of course, with it kind of close to me, uh, Azuzu has these kind of gauntlets on that are a bit more bracery than gauntlety. The, the underside of the hands are essentially laced with uh, leather uh, leather strings so that he can still get the feel of the hand against the drum, right? But the upper back of the hand have these long blades on. And uh, as usual, calls these his thunder gloves, as we'll go in with them. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a uh, uh, chi strike as well. Uh, so 12 on the attack. So this is a heavy chi strike? Yes, yeah, a heavy chi strike. Sorry, I should. Nice. And it's held, so it suffers a negative four. Nice. Oh, shit. Oh, that's a nat 20. <laughs> yeah, so Go ahead Okay, yeah um, I think I want to spend uh, The other couple of Frenzy from the pool <laughs> well, he's okay. gonna counter first. He does he's have a counter go. attack oh, Because he rolled a He rolled a oh, nat 20 yeah, because he, it was a 20 yeah. He's gonna try a sting ya And it is a poor attempt Oh, yeah Ooh, but yes so the thing tries to come in and sting Azuzu as they keep swinging and swinging the thing, the blade's missing. And then let's go for another another rage attack. That's more like it. And of course, this is basically um, kind of not quite a flurry, but... Uh, Azuzu pounds away at the drums between swings, timing things just so, and finally everything lines up, and Azuzu kind of takes both hands up high in that kind of mace-like form and smashes down on the thing. Uh, and let's see how much is it. With the chi strike, and then I gotta roll my drain. And it's times two because of the rage, right? Yeah. Oh, it's been a while. Oh, nice. Well, well, what's it look like as you kill this thing? Yeah, so Azuzu keeps swinging and swinging, kind of still holding the thing just vaguely by the tail, but then gets this shot and smashes down with both hands. And everybody sees as the kind of blood, whatever it looks like from these things, uh, sprays up all over around as the head is completely smashed into the deck. Uh. <laughs> nice. And... Hey, oh, hey. Yeah, thank you. That was awesome. So, hey, hey, um, being pressed by this, this veil fury as it comes over the railing, he draws this sword from uh, back sheath, and uh, it's a heavy chopping blade, and he, as he, as he Pulls it into position, he says, Kota's fang has not tasted meat in some time. And he will make a heavy attack. And behind you, you can see uh, uh, Una's like trying to reload the ballista as you're doing this. So, Oh, that's excellent. I love that. So basically, next round, you'll be able to fire it again. Coda's Fang. A miss. Uh -huh. uh, I will spend two Frenzy and make a Rage Attack. Oh, that was supposed to be two actions. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, oh, damn. <laughs> ah. 
power two. Nice. 24 is enough to knock it down. So it falls to the deck. It is one hex away from falling off the side. So mechanically, it should make a, a, a dex check, but these things can fly too. So. Should we see anyway? Maybe we should see. Might be fun if we change the dynamic. Target number four. Ah, no problem. Oh, yeah, it's there. All right, is that it for Hey Hey? Yep, that's my turn. Nil. All right. I want to ask, are there any penalties associated with running and attacking in melee? No, not for you. Um, Excellent. Since you're not, yeah, since you don't use a bow or, or a spell. Very well. So Neil will uh, take off into sprint and run up to this fail fury and try to very quickly stab it. And you can choose to do a quick attack or a, a heavy attack with two actions. Yeah, this will be a quick attack. Quick. Okay, cool. And it is outnumbered by three to one now, so it's going to suffer a little extra modifier. Two, three. And it should be technically on the deck. So. Ooh, and 11. The scary blade right there. Ah, that is blue. Nice. Got it. Not a natural one, unfortunately. Natural one is armor defeating. Oh, nice. So what does it look like as you kill this creature? So everyone sees this tall uh, figure, almost as tall as a Zuzu, just far lankier, <clears throat> dash in and just go in for a stab on the Veil Fury. And right at the last moment, they can see that where their stab is going to hit home directly to his chest. They actually divert the blade slightly and instead just cut its uh, the side of its torso open, and then tear tear it away quickly, leaving the creature to bleed out on the spot and die as it falls to the to the deck. Did did anything happen when you cut that creature and killed it? Anything with your blade? Uh... Not yet. They got okay. it out quickly enough. Cool. All right. Since that was a quick attack. You still have your movement if you want to move somewhere else and attack. I don't yes. know if you can reach somebody else. Yep. Yep. Cool. They have eight movement, which is a one, two, three, four, five, six. Nice. So they, uh, the stranger immediately wheels around and goes to engage this other approaching uh, creature. And as they are, they have Fury Fighter, the talent, they are actually going to make a heavy attack upon it. That's good. Thirteen. Right. This one has a mace. It is going to try to throw it up and block instead of dodge the attack. Oh, and it does in the match perfectly. You knock its weapon out of its hand. So oh. now it does not have the mace in its hand. Uh, Nil will try again. You spending uh, one fury to do a quick attack from uh, the pool that Azusa has offered. Is there any left still in the pool? I think it was used. Was it used? Yeah. Oh, then uh, that's fine. You can use your own frenzy. You have four uh, in that red box above your. Or, or uh, sorry. I have two, yes. I'm looking at something else. Yeah, you have two. If you want to, you can use one of yours. Or you can uh, pass. Yeah, we'll pass for now. It's not that pressing. Cool. Pip. Pip will have to hammer and run over here to John. Skull split your falls and so shall you. I need to make a heavy attack. Uh, 
Oh, nice. And now it's outnumbered, except for the negative one. Blip. Gonna be powered two damage. 28 damage knocks it to the deck. What does that look like as you take it down? Uh, Pip runs up and just kind of hooks the hammer in behind the knees and basically slams them into their deck to like sideways. And it hits the ground and and you can see it's like trying to it's thinking about reaching for it but we'll see what happens scars uh, on. i'm gonna i'm going to uh oh make one sorry last, uh, light attack gill splitter defense minus two for being on the ground and outnumbered it is a hit This one's a light attack, yeah. Yeah, it's a light attack. It's 25. Oh, it exploded. And what does it look like as Pip takes this creature out? Well, it's called Skull Splitter for a reason. Pip hefts it up and just brings it down on their head, crushing it into a pulp. Sickening looks... crunch. And then turns and looks back out at this one, smiling. <laughs> All right. Those two are dead. I think you skipped scars on. Oh, did I? Yes. <laughs> I did it on purpose. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. All right. Hey, scars on. Um, let's see. Uh, Scarzon, uh, seeing that Azuzu has dealt with whatever these, this, this hornet, this hornet's been dealt with, and this one as well, is, uh, running forward to get to Hey Hey, uh, seeing that there are other ones closing in. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. And, um, this is gonna try to get the attention of the ones coming on the ship so hey hey doesn't get surrounded or try to get the attention and uh, we'll go into full defense again okay cool maybe um maybe make a charisma check there um or what attribute that you think would fit for you trying to get that one's attention there and we'll go to this one I'm being some kind of charismatic I guess we'll do that This one rolls back, gets up, or rolls to the side and gets up and just quickly tries to hit you with this blade. Heavy attack. I'm going to go for the dodge again. So, nice. hey, hey, just with the uh, cat like reflexes, uh, dodges back and out of the way. All right, Charisma 5. It's looking at the easy target, of course, thinking about flying up on Hey Hey's back there. But we'll resist with a willpower and see if it comes at Skies on. Ha-ha! It worked. It flies straight for you. Scars on and tries to heavy attack you as it comes close. Oh, you know what? It is going to try something first. Since it's flying full speed, 
It's going to try and do um, its flying skill to get some bonuses on this. Basically, for every 10 that is rolled, uh, well, 10 and then every five intervals after that, uh, it can gain a plus to its defense for flying fantastically. But we'll see if that works at all. I am quacking in my boots. Isn't that the terminology right? <laughs> there we go. Jeez. Poorly. It rolled poorly. Alright, here comes the heavy attack. Oh, I was sitting oh, here like, yeah, fuck. this is just gonna happen. Well, we get two rolls at it. Let's see what's Yeah, going. that's true. I'm gonna try to use my shield. Okay, that's one. Wrong on that. What? Oh my goodness. That is amazing. Having none of that. Yeah, Scarzon brings his shield up as whatever. It looks like an axe, I guess, is what this one's using. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it, it looks like it's about to hit, but it just gives him uh, a bit of a, a close shave on his on his head. That was amazing. <laughs> All right. Gabriel is going to run and try to help take control of the ship. Because uh, you can see in front of the ship, it looks like the clouds are parting, and you notice that there are some mountains getting close that you're getting close to. Um, this one. I'm going to go down, starting from the top of the ship. See who he attacks. D6. Izuzu. Alright, hey. so this creature flies to there. She concentrates on it. But since she's flying fast, uh, takes away that bonus. She's going to fire the shock orb at Izuzu. I'm glad she rolled low. Oh, uh, that's dodge, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Azuzu nice. hears it coming more than anything, even with the thunder of the drums, and manages to dip kind of behind the uh, mast there, just in time. And it's your turn. Perfect. Um. Ooh, that... This one had an axe, you said, right? It Was that did. what hit me? It did. Bone it did. Um, it's, just, yeah. it's just a flail, but yeah. Okay, yeah. As soon as you will pick up the axe with an action, right? And then... One, two, three. We'll fucking Love hurl it. it at this bastard. Um... So, I'll go ahead and... <laughs> Uh, that's 2d6 for one of those, right? Yeah. Can you- uh, you can't do a heavy attack with Throne, can you? Oh, you can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can. Totally. Okay. Yeah, definitely do a heavy attack. Just both hands on this thing. Um, the tail keeps going at the drums, of course, so the music never stops. Um, and just fucking hurls it at the thing. Um, so I don't think I added that- let me add that one for my attacks. Do you have the skill throwing? Yup. Nice. And it's uh, just a I bone hope. axe. Two D yeah. six. And I hope this uh, 
The gods be with you. 6 Can you do a cheese strike with a thrown weapon? Only if you're uh, specialized in that that weapon. Then that means you I am like... specialized with axes. Hey, then there you go. Okay, yeah, I'll do I'll do a cheese strike. Fuck yeah. So not only are you heavy throwing this thing, you're like filling it with some chi energy. Hell yes. And because it was one action, and then two, and then I'm going to spend an additional one to aim it, which is an extra plus two, right? Perfect, yep. Yeah. All right, so that's a total of three actions on it using one of my frenzy. Not great to hit, but hopefully it lands. Oh no, oh fuck! Oh. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> so close. Yeah, Uzuzu hurls this thing at it, and it nearly takes off a wing, but the thing just dips just in time. Oh, let me roll That's these things. Hey, hey. Um, oh, you got anything else? I do have one more action, but I'm not going to use it yet. Um, but I will. Would I be able to? Is this like cover right here, would you say? The edge of the ship? Yeah, Sorry. yeah you can get some cover. Okay, yeah, he'll dip right into cover. Cool. All oh, right. wait, no, wait, sorry, I used Frenzy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Hey Hey will, um, becoming uh, aware of the fact that Una has reloaded the ballista uh, behind them, uh, Hey Hey will uh, try to finish this one off with another swipe of the Averblade Kota's Fang. And uh, I will Is spend one. one? No, I'm gonna spend one action to aim, and then I'm gonna spend two actions to do a heavy attack. Total of three. A sixteen. I forgot to add the plus two. An eighteen. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Sweet. That'll hit. All right. Let's see how we do for damage. Twenty-two, and that is enough to kill it. It's nice. Uh, yeah. So um, I think uh, hey, hey takes a step back, and then brings it to chopping blades. So it brings it down really heavy um, in between the the shoulder and the neck. Uh, and then as the creature falls, he steps, puts plants a foot in its chest, pulls the blade out, and I can move at this point, right? If you yeah yeah, if you haven't burned yeah. frenzy. Have not burned frenzy yet. Move to here and make an attack on this one. I will spend two frenzy to a heavy. Mm, this one's outnumbered by Scarzone. Okay. Scarzone's in melee with it. So it suffers a minus one. It is hit. Yeah. 26. It's a nice wound. That's gonna knock it to the deck. Great. That's my turn. And Nil. Alright. Nil will come stomping forward towards this fury on the deck and attempt to finish it off. With a rage attack. There we are. 19. Now it's outnumbered by two others, and it's on the ground, suffering negative four total. Oh, it's so dead. Four, negative three, yep. Yes, what does it look like when you kill it? All right, this time, <clears throat> Nil goes right in for the kill. <clears throat> stabbing this thing against the deck and as it's stabbed in its dying throws it's it somehow starts to screech even louder as 
a strange aura seems to just flow from it to the to the blade of the stranger and almost pan in an almost moment of panic stranger very quickly puts their foot against the fury and rips their blade out leaving them to perish upon the deck bleeding do you think the others noticed that it might require a perception but it could be like quickly noticed yeah okay so you three if you wish pip scars on uh, hey, hey, you can probably make perception checks. If you're trying to hide that, which I think Nell might be, you can do a concealment check. But if you don't have that skill concealment, you can default to perception. I'll default to perception. So what you want to beat is a... A nine. Ah. Okay, sorry, I missed the part you were trying to hide there. Uh, <laughs> essentially, something strange happened when... Uh, Nil stabbed this creature with the blade, and they very quickly went to like dislodge the creature from the blade, almost in a panic. Yeah, I, I'm nice. not gonna roll for a Zuzu. Uh, he would be busy <laughs> and looking yeah. in the complete opposite it's direction. True, I think so. Maybe uh, let me, let me roll for Gabriel. He's facing that way. He is concentrating on something else though. But that's a rip. Nope. All right. Cool. Secret and is still that... safe. For now. <laughs> is that it for now? Uh, they're gonna take a step this way, just hardly like <laughs> just making a bit of space between them and the others, and they're gonna use their last melee action to pick up this dead uh, creature's. What was it? A mace? You said? Yeah. All right. They will pick it up. To, to release has, like, next round. Excellent. It has like spikes sticking out of it as well, like almost nails, rusty nails, and, and blood on it still from probably killing people on the other ship. Um, Pip, it is your turn. So I'm going to take aim and hold on the land bolts and release the ring. Man about, and it is. It was dodging Zuzu's. Um, this fucker. <laughs> I know. The Jackie Chan monster. Frenzy, just take another shot. More magic. Man, the eights are loving you today. Lucky yeah. number eight. Yeah. Not so lucky. <laughs> Damn. Any more? Well, I think I'll just move a little closer and stare it down. That was a right. warning! Scarzon, uh. anything from Scarzon? Yes, uh, Skarzan, um, seeing that this one is now dealt with, and the remaining threats over here, um, Skarzan is gonna run over and, Azuzu, behind my shield! And he's gonna try to basically give cover for Azuzu, and, uh, and push as well if they get behind him. Cool. Uh, full defense, of course. I can't throw anything. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to just get, uh, like, something for improvised weapons so I can just throw everything. <laughs> Start grabbing shit off the ship. Greg, just get, just get weapon training and beer bottles. And, uh, I'm sure we have plenty there of There we bottles. go. <laughs> Gabriel's trying to pilot the ship right now, so he's back there. Uh, and, uh... The last creature, it stares at you all, knowing that it's not, doesn't have a chance against you. And with the rest of its companions killed, it just screeches and then flies off, dives into the clouds, and vanishes. Ending the combat. That little fucker. <laughs> it 
knew I was about to pick up this bastard's knife and throw it. <laughs> uh, and uh, you hear Gabriel shout to uh, uh, to man the sails, uh, and he shouts off in the direction that uh, that you all need to go. Uh, uh, does anybody have skyfaring skills? Uh, I do. <laughs> I do. I have it. Hey. Cool. Cool. So you'd be the one Thank probably fuck. help out there. Yeah. Sales to where the sales at? Yeah. Um, yeah, you can go um, uh, on the ropes anywhere. Okay, so Scar's on will climb up the... He'll, he'll holster his mace and start climbing up the ropes. Um, and then, yeah, whatever we need to do to, to man these sails. Where is this at? This will be a, uh, a teamwork type of deal right here where he's going to roll. Nice. In the meanwhile, you should be able to so I was very eager to help. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, I need the help. Oh my. <laughs> and if you don't have the skill and you want to help, though, you know, you can always roll a, um, uh, this goes off of intelligence. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you suffer a negative three modifier for not being skilled in the... So, <laughs> Azusa will look at it and think about, w I'm not going to do it, but I'm Azuzu's going to look at it and think about what it would look like if Azuzu tried to do it. Uh, just out of curiosity. It would have been great, but I didn't. Because Azuzu, kind of everybody couldn't hear the, the thud and uh, slight scritch on the wood of the claws as Azuzu stomps on over and uh, grabs the first mug that is available and has liquid in it and just downs it and then starts hammering the drums again to inspire the crew uh, to the sound of the movements of the ship. <laughs> uh, I will say that uh, uh, just for uh, cinematic purposes, uh, I'll put Captain out there. Captain Shiz Shizad the Reaver. Um, everybody was pretty much fighting as well, and they were kind of fighting in the background, you know. Uh, cinematically, so Shazad like holds up his weapon and shouts, uh, "Good job, lads! Aha, we are victorious!" And uh, uh, pretty much everybody's raises their weapons, and some of the other crew, you know, shouts uh, shouts out victoriously. Okay, just you guys are... dangling from their feet over the ropes and kind of pulling at the sails. And you, uh, and you notice too, um, and you guys are able to just miss these tall peaks with snow on top of them. Um, as you skirt around the peaks, you start to uh, see the islands below uh, coming out of the clouds in the veil mist. Uh, and as you look back, you can see kind of like a storm almost. It, the veil mist looks like, a, like the flashing uh, of lightning and thunder rolling. You can see uh, those winged creatures. Uh, you can see where that ship that was, uh, it was probably probably the ship of the stranger Nil that has joined you now uh, has crashed down on the mountainside and, you know, just just looks like fire. Um, and you guys can do some RP here. All right. With that, Nil will begin to swiftly clean their blade of blood, and they will spare a look towards the corpse they had to, they had stabbed through, and uh, just go over to it, seeming to examine it for a moment quietly. Uh, Scarzlon is going to start gathering the bodies of the fallen, uh, whether they're crew or creature, and will bring them kind of in a line, um, and. Uh, Cover them in whatever they have. I mean, they're they're flying, so there's probably not going to be anything to cover them, really. So just kind of cross their arms and uh, lay them in a row. And he will begin the slow process of communing each one's uh, spirit to the maker or to whatever 
um, whatever gods they believed in. As you uh, as you do it, um, and you can make a spiritual influence roll too. Um, when you do this, um, you notice that these creatures perhaps were one time mortal. Uh, maybe something mutated them into what they are now. No additional bonuses, but um, you just sense that this is a dark place, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that something must have cursed these creatures or mutated them. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the island here or the veil mist, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, we'll take a, um, these creatures that they were wearing any kind of cloth? Or were they completely yeah. um, animalistic? I would say some of them still had the remnants of, uh, some garb on them, yeah, if you want to take something. Yeah, so I think, uh, hey, hey would take a scrap of cloth and would wipe the blood from his, his blade and then would sit down and proceed to check it. Uh, to see if it's been damaged in the fight and take out a whetstone and begin smoothing away any blemishes on the blade. And he's, uh, we'll watch with, hmm, it's hard to say if it's curiosity with him or blind indifference. Um, he's very difficult to read, but he's very, he, he, he watches with seeming interest the ritual that Scarzon goes through. About that time, uh, the drum slow as work steadies, and uh, it's clear that the situation is uh, resolved entirely. And Azuzu finally uh, thunks down into one of the seats there, uh, grabbing up the nearest keg from alongside the table. I presume it would be a uh, something there under the table to kind of hold it all in place basically so it doesn't go flying and such probably some kind of netting and uh begins pouring mugs of ale or uh, switch hole or whatever have you that we may have in here and uh starts chugging one and kind of looks to the others and lets out one big loud beat of the drum come on then oh dad let's get a drink We're all going to spare my glass before I turn back over to Neil. So, um, what did exactly happen there? How you dropped on our ship? Ah, uh, um, well, you see, it is honestly quite as it looks. That other ship that was falling, I believe that was the ship I was on. Uh, they look over the edge of for a moment. Um, all I can really do is wish them luck, I suppose. But two of the creatures started to carry me off, trying to drop me. Uh, but I managed to hold on to them until I saw your ship, at which point I stabbed one of them, uh, just enough to get them to let me go. And I slammed down here. And, well, now I found myself with, myself with you. Fair enough. We should be to land with World 2 long. Get any roots? Oh, my name is Pip. Ah, oh, pleasure to meet you. Um, the previous crew, crew one of them called me Nilgain, said something about a meaning empty one. But I suppose that's the name I shall use for now. Uh, well, if you're empty, then fill it with drink. Here. <laughs> and, yeah, Izuzu shoves both of you in large mugs full of ale. No, like, grabs it. It's taken slightly by surprise. But kind of just sloshes it a bit and looks at it. Then, uh, takes a tasting sip. Mm. Good, right? Just kind of just try to do a handstand and make it that way. 
<laughs> this up close, when they tilt their head back to like take the drink and drink a little bit more deeply, you can actually see that their skin is very, very pale. Uh, indeed, to this to sight. But it's quickly hitting away, hidden away by the shadow of the hood again once they lower their head. I think uh, Azuzu will do a perception roll this time if that's cool. Go for it. <laughs> They're not particularly trying to hide it, so. Yeah, I'd say that does it. So, yeah, what, what's Azuzu peak, I suppose, as they try and kind of see under your hood a bit? Um, there's not much to see. They see a, a few, like, soft features, the pale skin, and it almost seems like their eyes are lightly glowing. It's kind of strange. Especially in the darkness of the hood, it, that's especially noticeable. Yeah, the Zuzu... You'd probably notice the Zuzu kind of those, those big reptilian... And, of course, this is placeholder art, of course. Uh, if you'll have mine done sometime soon, it's gonna be yeah. fucking badass. But Azuzu has these big, um, reptilian eyes with those kind of, uh, snake-like slits down through them with this deep maroon kind of background to the eye itself. And, uh, the eyes are very piercing as they gaze down at you. Uh, what, what, how, how tall is No. Uh, Nil is like around almost seven feet tall. Oh very, yeah, so actually, they're they're um, very lanky though. Like if if Azuzu, if Azuzu's stocky, Nil is not quite half their body width, but you know, around there. Nice, yeah, yeah. So Azuzu's um actually looking at you almost level, probably probably actually just a bit shorter, um than in that case. And as yeah. he kind of looks to Nil, still staring a bit. You fight well, at least. You can drink some more, though. What about you, Hey Hey? You're not going to drink anything. Hey Hey will uh, look up at that and um, finish. Put it. Put his blade back away and. Um, Smile and say, no, no. And he will get out his pipe and begin to load it and uh, begin smoking instead. <laughs> Fair enough. Alcohol makes you slow. And as soon as you kind of stares at the pipe for a moment before turning mid thought and kind of spying scars on. Are you done yet, Skarzan? Can we kick him off yet? I am already in the process of doing it. And he is uh, kind of working a few of them over the, uh, the side, the creatures, as he begins to toss them over uh, one by one. He took all their stuff, right? <laughs> I believe the crew already had their pick. Unless they intend to take the flesh as well. Yeah, Zuzu kind of steps on over, grabbing one of the mugs and pushing it towards Skarzan, while simultaneously pushing with uh, the tail one of the bodies off the edge, offering the mug. Oh, I'm just teasing. Come on, lighten up, Skarzan. And um, Skarzan looks at the, the mug that as soon as he pushes towards him. Is this water? What is in this? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Gabriel starts laughing. <laughs> shall I, shall I, I don't know if I need to bother doing a charisma roll. I would smell it. I assume it would not smell you like definitely water. Smell, it definitely smells like ale. Yeah, as goes on. He, Watered he, down he, ale, but. He, he offers a weak smile. Uh, you know, I have taken an oath against this. I appreciate the gesture, though. Uh, and, uh, you feel the tail kind of pat you on the shoulder. I'm still gonna offer every time, you know. 
as I expect you will. But I will give it to you in return, in kind. And he offers the mug back to Azusa. <laughs> and I'll drink it in turn. And yeah, Azusa just tabs at it. And Scarzan looks over to everybody and before he continues. Everyone fought well today. You should take great pride. This was not a fight we were looking for, but it found us all the same. And it did not find us wanting. Gabriel, uh, Gabriel looks you over for a minute, uh, scars on, and he says, um, you seem to be, uh, treating them a little kind f for such a vile enemy. Well, looks them over, he's quiet for a second. I am no expert with these things, but when I look upon them, form, their behavior, I think they were like us once, but this place, he gestures out to the, the mists, the mountains, I think it changed them, made them this. I, no, I, th I think they were, well, Terran among others once hey hey we'll say at that perhaps they were Terran but they deserved killing regardless yeah I'm sure it'll make your uh, make right that's what it is kind of looks a bit over that <laughs> yeah Scarzan looks at the uh that's Hey Hey and the Zuzu. I am in no position to decide who or what deserves killing, but they brought us a fight. They made it us or them. I harbor no ill will towards these creatures. Perhaps we were trespassing. Who is to say? But they did not even try to speak with us once. They simply tried to kill us. And they did kill this one's crew and... Scars on points to nil. So, I commend their souls all the same, even as I toss their remains back to Goth below. He continues to do so. One of them had a dagger or a knife, is that correct? Yeah. Did it get thrown off the deck? No, I think just the axe got thrown. Yeah. And it was uh, it was more of a throwing knife, too, so you can take that if you want to. I think it's a D12. It uh -huh. is the actual throwing knife item? Yeah. Okay. I will take that, thanks. That's the one Unless that cut someone it. objects. Does Pip want it as a souvenir? It wouldn't hurt for me to have a throwing weapon. In that case, uh, hey, hey, we'll, uh, look at it and sort of check the balance of it and then toss it to Pip. Thank you. Does Thank you. Pip catch it as though, uh, they were practiced in the art of handling throwing knives it just kind of gracelessly grabs it from the air could make a dex doesn't look like they're doesn't look like they're particularly skilled with knives standing right over that grate there <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear a yelp it. from a crewmate below? Oh no, Pip got it. Nice. Uh, Gabriel looks over to uh, Nil, the stranger, and says, uh, "And says, uh, well, perhaps you'll be needing uh, a place to sleep. Or perhaps we should go below deck, and you could pick out a spot." 
Uh, that would be kind of you. Uh, truth be told, uh, I wasn't supposed to be paid until the end of the voyage on that other ship, so <laughs> I found myself without funds. But not. I can offer my services in exchange for the housing here. If that sounds like a suitable arrangement, arrangement to your captain. He says, indeed it does. Let us go below deck, friends. And I'm going to take you guys below deck real quick. So everybody can check out the, uh, the entrance to below deck is here. Just so everybody can see. Uh, I thought so. There is a door here that goes to captain's quarters. Um, we'll show you what that looks like real quick, too. He's got the hookup, of course. For now. <laughs> this is below deck. Stairs there as you come all down. Nice little setup. There's a room up here. I'm not sure if it's claimed or not. There's another room down here with like two cots or something in it. Uh, and there's plenty of, you know, hammocks hanging up below deck. Uh, this is the brig. And, uh... Yeah, I'm sure as uh, they he, are, like, coming down the stairs, Azuzu's kind of following along, keeping an eye on the new guy, of course. And makes a joke, oh, yeah, I see your room's right on over there. <laughs> Pointing to the brig, of course. <laughs> uh, truthfully, I wouldn't mind something a little bit private like that. Nothing, nothing pressing, of course, just preference. But, uh, what spots are not claimed yet? Well then, good. I, I think you could, uh, take one of the spots in this room here if you want privacy. And he points mm -hmm. back down here in this room. I don't think anybody claimed that. Yeah, just find the nearest bed and sleep in it. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I don't know. If I did that in the previous ship, I am pretty sure I would never stop stinking ever again. <laughs> That's what soap's for. And scale polish. They hadn't ever heard of it. But very... <laughs> it is, it has this slightly odd, kind of condescending look <laughs> from this fucking scald berserker. <laughs> 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 but you are very kind. I think I will take one of those spots down there. If I may ask, where are you all heading? So you kind of look to see others. Where are we going here again? I haven't checked in uh, a while. Gabriel, um, he says, uh, over here to the table. I'll show you. And, uh, brings the map out. Kind of lays it on the table. Uh, we'll go back over to the map here. The map of... If you can see this area, is everybody seeing? Yep. Here's your yep. ship right here. That's where your location is. You guys flew uh, from this area over to here. And that took one day because you guys were flying high speed. Uh, if you're on a caravan or, or a wagon, it, one hex would be a day, pretty much. So, flying in this ship is pretty awesome. As far as speed goes. Survivability, maybe. Maybe lower, but... Um, the Isle of Illusion is where you have just flown into. And this place that you're supposed to be going where the shipwreck is, is through this area and right over here to some old, uh, where legends have about ruins down there on the islands. And this whole place has like floating islands too. So you'll probably be seeing them soon. Um, 
but it's supposed to be one of the more dangerous areas in Mage Realm, where ships get lost all the time. And and as he puts the map out, you know, he uh, he says, uh, "Well." I think rope cut out. We have a few more out. Oh, there we are. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there he we are. Sorry. We should be, uh, we should be there in a few more hours. And if you need to do anything, sharpen your blades or prepare any potions. And he looks over towards, uh, Scars on and, uh, uh, and Pip. Uh, says I'm not That's the eggs. Sure, if you do any alchemy or anything like that. And uh, he says, uh, we're going down to investigate the re the wreck. Uh, the staff, the sky caller, is supposed to be down there somewhere, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Well, should be good. I hope I it is. Foot move again. I see. So a, re a retrieval mission then. Sounds fine. I'm not too familiar with this area, so I will entrust in your navigation skills. At least I assume you are the navigator if you're the one showing me this. I am the navigator. I. Where do you come from? And he, he kind of looks at you in this light. He can probably see your face a little bit closer. N Neil just kind of looks around for a moment, seeming uncomfortable. Just looks down at Vince as well. Um, truth be told, I don't know. Uh, um, did you say that there was a symbol on your cloak? Yes, indeed. Uh, and as like as Nil, uh, like turns around a bit, uh, a little bit of there's a little bit of a glitter coming from their cloak, a little shimmer as uh, a torn and slightly faded but still uh, slightly shimmering golden emblem seems to uh, emanate from their from the cloak they are wearing. Would any of us have any knowledge of what that symbol means? That would be heraldry um, or intelligence. Uh, you could do intelligence with a minus three if you don't right. have heraldry. I'll try intelligence. I might pass out from thinking too hard about this. <laughs> no fucking idea. Uh, so 25. <laughs> oh my I... good lord. Damn. You might know exactly what it is. Smart doggo. So what, what is that there? Uh, well, for Scarson, uh, it is, it's just slightly, slightly hard to tell, but after staring at it for a bit, you can tell that is the a noble crest, a crest of a of a family of a noble family. T, would I know anything about this noble family or anything that's common knowledge about them? They aren't a particularly important one, at least not in the circles you know. But would they know the name of this noble family? I think so, with that roll. Fair enough. You would know their the family name to be Wavecrest. Wavecrest, right? Yes, one word. Um, I don't think Scarzon would say anything right away. Um, 
after after everybody after we wrap up this powwow over the map, maybe. But um, he would take note of it. Yeah. So Nilgam will just say, "We'll continue." I don't quite know anything about myself, really. I don't even know my name. That is, Nilgain is just what that previous scholar in that other ship bap baptized me with. First one to ask my name, really. Most don't care for a mercenary's name. Only their blade. That's boring. <laughs> Perhaps. Can't write a song about someone if you don't know their name. True enough. I suppose you are rather eccentric, eccentric crew. But... Arr. Well, hey, 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 would say perhaps you suffered some injury and now you cannot remember who you are. Um, well, I don't think I have any sort of head injury, but I do have this and they are going to reach up um, and as they pull their uh, like lift their head up a little bit. Uh, some strands of white hair start to fall out from underneath the hood. A little bit long, reaching just about their shoulder. And uh, they pull down on the cloak a little bit to expose their neck to show a massive gash going right across it. And uh, it doesn't quite look healed so much as just there. Almost bla uh, an, an Icarish black color. They only show it for a few seconds before they uh, hide it away again underneath the cloak. Who are you? Say again, I didn't quite catch that pip. Who are you, Lavis? Uh, well, that's funny you should ask. Very slowly and like very just nervously, they take off their hood and reveal a just a pale white face with very gaunt looking, uh, with very gaunt uh, bags under their eyes, and their eyes look a sickly faded yellow, only lightly glowing now that they're matched by the glow of the lanterns underneath the deck, and their hair is a just a thin, ghastly, ghastly white. A full head of it, thankfully, but not all that great looking. They actually don't, they wouldn't look that bad. They would look, they would, one could say they would be quite attractive if it weren't for the fact that they almost looked like they just crawled out of their grave. Hmm. Yeah, Zuzu kind of looks to the others and watches as Nil shows. Why is everyone out here so fucking weird? Um, I f <laughs> he kind of looks to the others. <laughs> I think Hey Hey will make a warding gesture. Um, if anyone happens to speak the sign language of the Mentep, I'll be happy to explain it. Uh, and then he's gonna head up top. At at that uh. No, Nil doesn't understand it, but they do pull their hood back up, kind of getting the hint. But yes, that is the situation I find myself in. No memory, just a strange wound on my neck. You think your head will come off if we pull it? I would rather you don't try. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Gabriel uh, looks a little bit uh, shocked at first, but um, he nods and he says, Well, uh, I believe you're one of the tribes of the Vitagi. Are you not? <laughs> um, I'm not sure, but, I, but that is what the scholar told me. He said I do look like a Forsaken, I think they called it. Not a... Not a title, I guess, that I would want to really associate myself with. 
you know, for my own sanity. And he says, well, you've come to the right place, and then, anyway, friend, no worries. You seem like a, a good fellow. You helped us kill those spawn. Vatagi, they're said to have the blood of the demon kin within them, but that could just be a rumor. They say the same thing about orcs and goblins. And all, you're all welcome here on board this ship. Thank you. You're very kind. And I do not intend anyone any harm. I... I can safely say I do not have such urges as the undead I'm so I have sometimes been compared to. He looks over at Pip and he says, Well, we all have... Well, some of us have darkness in our past. I'm from Icobor. And uh, many would call me uh, a thief and a liar when I was young. What about you, Pip? Where do you come from? I'm from Miskard. Oh, you were born there then? Yes. Uh, you're training to be some sort of spell guard? More so just enjoying the adventures. Not really sure about long term goals or to experience great things and find a way to make my mark on the world. He looks over at Azuzu. I thought your kind came from far north. Mm, yes. Uh, Azuzu has traveled a long way. I was born... And, and you can tell it, Azuzu's clearly thinking on it. <laughs> I don't remember. Somewhere up there. No, Azuzu genuinely doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Family left. It was long story. Anyway, I used to run some goblins around the jungles. Then I found the ship, and it's all... Well, long story. No more goblins. I don't have to lead anyone. I can just sing and drum and drink. And fuck. <laughs> Gabriel picks up this mug and he smiles. He says it's been a long time for me for that. Well, except for the singing and the drinking. Does, um, do you think, uh, hey, hey, do you think Gabriel would know about your past? Um, didn't they just meet? So, uh, um, oh, they did, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the, the North Ward company that, uh, hey, hey works for, they might have, you know, told them a little bit about, about us. So maybe. Yeah. I think he's going to come up deck and uh, talk to you. Are we all good to move above deck? Yeah. Uh, I was going to talk to Nil, but we could do above deck if you want. Okay, cool. You can probably catch him like on the way up. Yeah, I was going to try to um, just kind of bring him over to the side, talk with him. But we can do like whatever above deck conversation first. Yeah, that's cool. 
you guys go above deck and uh basically uh Gabriel starts working uh you know working on flying the ship again or helping the captain fly it anyway maybe the captain turns in and uh and uh Gabriel ends up pointing out the uh the islands that you guys are flying to so so you can see some like scattered uh storm clouds and stuff like that but you can see the islands down there that you guys are going to it looks almost like a like an old volcano with some smaller islands around it and he says i i think the ship went down over there that's where we be heading mates and you can go ahead and do your your talk off to the side yeah all people are scattered about the deck um scars on my approach now no, might I have a moment of your time? No, looks over and then gives a, gives a slight hand. Of course. What do you need? Please, with me. Yeah, just walk over to the side here. I am Skarzan, by the way. I am not certain we had introduced one another. I think I heard your name be shouted, yes, but it's a pleasure to meet you. You as well. Listen, I am uncertain. Well, if you wanted this detail to be known or not, or if you even knew it yourself, but gestures to the uh, symbol on his cloak. Are you aware of the symbolism of that heraldry on your clothing? Uh, no, I've been searching, actually. I think it's, you know, the only clue I really have of who or what who I was or what happened to me, but not even the scholar on the other ship knew it. Do, do you? I do. That is a noble family's crest. Belongs to the family name of Wavecrest. Wavecrest? Are, are you sure? I'm certain. I've seen it before. Oh. Um. They're like quiet for a moment, seeing to just be taking in the information. There's like a, almost a look of relief on their face. Uh, do you, uh, you don't know how much of a favor you've, you've just done for me. I thought I wouldn't ever really find out anything about myself. If you're certain that is the symbol of Wavecrest, then this family, then, oh, thank you. Truly. No need to thank me. Through the Maker, all things are possible. So I will pat you on the shoulder. And, uh... He will nod to Nil and, um... go to help uh, Izuzu clean up the blood from the deck, thinking that is a good idea. I think uh, Gabriel's going to go over to Hey Hey, and uh, what, what is Hey Hey doing right now? I think Hey Hey is probably uh, curling up in the corner of the foredeck near the ballista, and it uh, looks like he has every intention of taking a nap. And he kind of comes up a little cautiously at first, and. Uh, Pretends to be checking out the ballista, maybe, and uh, he says, um, are you, uh, are you quite skilled in firing one of these things? You looked as though, uh, you knew what you were doing. Hmm, I, um, done it a few times. Do you have any advice? Never have I fired one from an airship. Well, I'm certain I could uh, show you a few things, but um, I'm not quite good at aiming the thing. But I can reload pretty quickly. If we get into another scrap again, I'll be sure to help you. 
Uh, working as a team is always preferred. It lightens the loads for everyone. He says, um, where is it that you hail from? Is it is it the desert lands or from Kotus? The desert lands of all Denali. Uh, interesting. Have you and been what there? Did you... No, I've never been that far. Ikebor is not uh, not too far from this place. Once uh, I lived in the the poor areas of the cities there but uh and one day i saw one of those ships come flying in and then i knew that's what i wanted to do escape on one of those things and never turn back to that place a lot of thieves and assassins in ikevar if you know what i'm saying at that uh hey hey will smile and a nod and um, one ear, his ears will sort of perk up uh, as uh, though Gabriel has his full attention. And he'll say, I might know what you mean. Yes. Do you have need of that sort of work? And he thinks for a moment and he says, um, well, there's a, a pretty, pretty big price on that captain's head. And, uh, perhaps, uh, you'd be the one to get it if we come in contact with him. Uh, you might be the stealthy type. I heard a little bit about you when we talked to the captain about hiring you. I've always found that it's easier to take a victim in their bed while they're sleeping than to fight through their guards in the daytime. And uh, he looks around towards the others and he, and he says, you know a bit about poisons and such? At that, Hey Hey will absolutely lean forward and say um, conspiratorially and say do you have some i am well versed in their use and creation he kind of frowns and he says no but uh, i was hoping to to score some mm. i have a few on hand yes Well, How would much? you be interested in parting with any? Um, hmm. <laughs> hey, hey, we'll say he, he, he'll sort of, um, much like, um, someone who is skilled at, um, a, a skilled pickpocket or a skilled uh, magician can, you know, sort of with a bit of redirection, produce something seemingly from nowhere. Um, hey, hey, produces a small vial and sort of palms it into Gabriel's hand um, in a, a gesture, you know, like as though he were just patting him on the shoulder, you know, or they were shaking hands or something like that, uh, a vial. And hey, hey, will say, consider it an investment on future profits. Mm, he smiles. You can see his teeth are pretty bad, but he, he's like, uh, he winks at you and he says, um, I'll be sure to take care of you when I can. And uh, Hey Hey will nod and smile and say, I'm certain that you will. Uh, and so I removed a vial of fire sap from my character sheet, and, and uh, you can 
pass yeah. that along to Gabriel. I'll definitely put it on him. Oh, and I almost forgot about this. Does anybody have the skill creature lore? If not, uh, um, I thought they're, I didn't have it, yeah. those creatures that you fought did have those, uh, like thorax, you know, the, uh, the sacks on them with the, the injectors. You know the oh yeah, yeah we should have thought about that. Lore here. Yeah. I was in a big hurry to throw them overboard, and I did. Yeah, those those went the went over the deck. Oopsie whoopsie. That's too bad. If anybody had it, I would be like, you probably would have thought about it. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah. Nope. Didn't think about it. I have nine in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a good idea, though. I bet they would have had some kind of interesting venom in them. Yeah. That's all right. Let's just be glad we didn't find out. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And what was that? What was that poison called? Fire? Fire sap. Fire sap. Oh, the good stuff. That's 2d6, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he he puts it in his uh, his belt pouch and and he says, "Well, I'll let you get some sleep then." Um, hey, hey, we'll yawn and stretch and uh, curl up to do exactly that. And is there anybody else gonna do a uh, any conversation before we continue? Zuzu's over with scars on, kind of. Yeah, Nil is just. Just tapping along. Nil is considering what they've just been told. The implications. Pretty fucking heavy. <laughs> I don't think we're good. Yep. Alright, you guys see this image here? Yes. Indeed. So, breaking through the dark clouds, um,. You guys start to descend even more towards the uh, towards the surface. You can see the swamps uh, and these islands in one particular. And as you're passing over these swamps, you can see kind of a what looks to be like a, some kind of civilization on the on this small mountain. And there's some towers and uh, fires from the distance. Uh, and the two suns are starting to rise up on the horizon. You can see them kind of coming over the, the mountains there. And um, you see what looks to be like a shipwreck down below. And um, Gabriel shouts out, All right, get ready, lads. Whoever's on the away mission here. He says, uh, get your gear. We'll be going down on the skiff. <laughs> no. Nil will, you know, draw their sword. Hold it, hold, it, hold it to their side at the ready. Simply just going over to the onboarding point. Yeah, Azuzu kind of... Of course, Azuzu's gear being Azuzu. Um... <laughs> Uh, is kind of waiting by the skiff, and there's this low, heavy kind of dun 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 dun, dun, dun kind of low thrumming sound from the drums. Very ominous as everybody's like getting all their stuff together and gathering it up on the skiff. Hope she just stands there and smiling and kind of tapping the folks around them. Is the old is the most cheerful team in the day for her. And um, you're able to, you know, find the what remains of the remnants of this ship. Uh, everybody make perception checks. 
you can click on your token and go to the attributes. And if you want to make a prayer, this would be a good time too. You can click uh, your SI button up there. I'm all I'm always praying, but take it, yeah. No, Maker's not listening today. Maybe <laughs> yeah, we'll ask for a favor. No, not no. not taking not taking calls today. I guess. <laughs> oh, I I don't know if playing, I want to roll. <laughs> he's playing Modern Warfare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, so, close. so close. So, um, Azuzu kind of lets out this like really hushed uh, prayer, I think, because I, I am I am gonna roll it. Um, but Azuzu has for a long time been considered quite cursed and damned overall, um, and. This is a bit of the root of why they seek to, not just for Sathama, but kind of prove themselves to prove some, prove themselves to gods in general. Uh, but is it this button? Uh, which button is it? SI? SI. Yeah, there we go. SI. Yeah. But yeah, um, so sadly I have the damned trait, so I add a D4. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and my target's too, so I don't think I could hit it. But, uh, yeah, says Uzu. Of course, the gods turn their backs once more. You would have to roll zero one and a one on the four. <laughs> wow, he is truly damned. But um, as you're looking, uh, you know, there's of course no sign of this pirate. Uh, as you're looking at the ruins of the what remains of that vessel, and with that civilization nearby. It's very possible that whatever was on this ship could have been scoured already. Um, but he is talking about lowering the ship down anyway. And he says, uh, uh, the captain is anyway, just to check. And uh, Gabriel points out towards the uh, civilization in the distance. And he says, I think that way might be... Uh, the best idea yet, Captain. Uh, for if I had looted a ship already, I'd be taking my winnings there and partying with the rest of uh, the coin I made. What say you all? I say we go take the coin and party with it ourselves. Looks like it could be fun. If it is necessary. Hey, hey, gets up from his nap and stretches, yawns, and um says, hmm, maybe. And he says, after all, I am from Ikebor. And so was Captain Valdroth. We may uh, think alike, after all. And uh, he smiles to the others and to the rest of you and says, uh, let's go get some coin, mates. And I think that's where we'll end it for this episode. Nice. Yay. Very good. <laughs> that was awesome. I want everybody to... Uh, at least get to level four, and because um, I want I want everybody to know what it's what, you know what entail what what it's like to level up at least, and everybody get um, three uh, spiritual influence points plus a D four whatever you roll on the D four plus three. Nice, I, I have a chance now. <laughs> <laughs> in the one of course so you get a total of four Zuzu. and uh you'd have to go into your sheet and go to a uh, mystic and there's a little spot in there for spiritual influence point you just add whatever you three plus whatever you rolled uh, add that number to your spiritual influence point spiritual influence is for um you can do it uh once per combat you could kind of call out to your gods as like a 
you know, oh, I missed. I totally missed on this huge attack that I made. You know, maybe change. Uh, or if you go down when you're fighting, you know, maybe it'll change the uh, the. If you're not dead, maybe you're just wounded. You know, it's kind of a luck roll. Especially if you're not uh, big on religion, uh, you'd consider it more of a luck roll than anything. Uh, so that's what spiritual influence is. And um, if you go to the front of your character sheet, uh, there's a spot where it says how many more saga points you need to go up to fourth level. Um, just add that to your saved, your saved saga. And put it on your total, the amount that you need to get a level four. So we're going to gain 23 from the Yep. Cool. Does that make sense? Does everybody know what I mean? Yep. You're taking uh, Saga from next, with, that you need to get level four. Kind of subtracting it from your total Saga to get how many more you need. And just add that to uh, your save Saga and your total Saga. So it'll bring you up to level four automatically. Oh yeah, what about Rep? And everybody get 25 reputation points. Fuck yeah. D um, does everybody know how to level up? Uh, At fourth level. Why don't you walk us through it? 